We all remember our first console, whether it's a home one, or a handheld one, or a PS2, or a GBA, or a Sega Genesis, or whatever the heck this is. A lot of us share the same memory from our childhood, waking up early on the 25th of December, rushing to the Christmas tree, you open up the big present, and it's the newest console you've always wanted. That was when I got my 3DS. And let me tell you, that console was just awesome. I'm sure everyone who had a handheld console in their childhood can say that those things were really, really cool. Compared to home ones, playing games on handheld consoles offered the convenience of playing wherever you went. Although they had technological limitations that prevented them from porting home console games, the games on handheld ones were smaller and simpler. Which was actually a good thing. The simplicity of the games made them easier to play and more enjoyable to many. They also had so many details on them, making each one of them unique, like how there's music on the shop or settings menu, or how customizable the consoles were. There was literally something for everyone in these little devices. In this video, I'll go over the timeline of portable game consoles, and I'll share my experience and my memories with those consoles. And yes, I am recording with an old Sony camcorder from 2001. So, uh... Video may not look very good, but, um... Fucking deal with it, I, I guess. The first handheld console was the Microvision in 1979. This thing only plays 12 games. And it had a screen resolution of just 16 pixels and it sold zero copies. But it did pave the way to success to another handheld console called the Game Boy. It was released in 1989 and it was a massive hit. However, over time it has become clear that it hasn't aged very gracefully. One of its main drawbacks is that the screen is quite small, and it's also in monochromic, which means that the only color visible is this, and it's ugly, and I don't like it. Additionally, it also required four AA batteries for it to run, which you know is a bit inconvenient, you know? But it could play Tetris, so you know, fun game! Sega noticed the success of the Game Boy and they attempted to make their own handheld console and it's called the Game Gear. The Game Gear had more advanced technologies than the Game Boy, including a color screen with backlight and a nice library of games. However, the Game Gear was plagued with a short battery life. While it sold well, it never reached the same level of success as the Game Boy. Then, in 1998, it was the Game Boy Color. And this console is very accurate to its name, because the screen now has colors. That was when handheld games started to be good. Boom, 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 boom. Wait, there's GTA on the Game Boy? Then, a few years later, as technology advances, a new handheld console is released. The Game Boy Advance. This thing is near perfection. It features a more prominent display, a better color palette, new buttons, and the catalog, the catalog of games. Oh. My. God. Mario & Luigi, Minish Cap, Mario Kart, Metroid, Super Mario Advance, Pokemon, Advance Wars, Tony Hawk Pro... Wait, what? The only thing that I dislike is that it's horizontal. I just don't like it. So they made a new one, the GBA SP. The title of the video makes sense now, doesn't it? They made the original GBA more compact 
and they added a backlit screen so you can play it outdoors. Oh, and did I mention that this thing is backwards compatible? This thing is perfection! Now, with a console this good, Nintendo couldn't surely top the GB. They did it again. A touch screen and games with mechanics that revolve around it was a genius idea. This console fucking blew up. Everyone and their grandma had this device and the games, oh my god, there was literally a game for everyone. Heck, you could even play GBA games on it. This was my first handheld console. I mean, it's a 3DS, but most of the games I had were DS games, so I just called it a DS. And I loved every single game I played. But most of the playtime I had were not the DS games, it was a free application. And that application was none other than Flipnote Hatena. This app introduced me to animation and I was hooked. My animations were basically stickman fights and parkour and they looked terrible. But it was just fun. I just kept on animating and animating and I'd look up some popular animations and take inspiration from them. And I was just... That was just fun, man. It was such a good DSiWare game. It was like a mini internet with its own charm and people. Until Nintendo shut it down in 2013. Thanks, Nintendo. Y you always make us consumers very happy. But then, a new competitor approached, the Sony PlayStation Portable. It's a PlayStation that is portable. It has God of War, great game, the bad version of Persona 3, Vice City, Metal Gear Solid, also a great game, Little Big Planet, also a great game. Um, the graphics look good. Uh, you could also browse the web on it. Yeah, I don't know what to say about this. Uh, 82 million people bought this. What? Next up, in 2011, it's the Nintendo 3DS. Now this was a huge improvement from their previous console, because games were now in 3D. like how it had been in the past 12 years. It introduced to a lot of great games, including Mard 3D Land, Ocarina of Time, Animal Crossing, A Link Between Worlds, Pokemon, Luigi's Mansion, and Check Terra. The 3DS is what I consider the ultimate handheld console, because you can play any handheld games from Game Boy to the present day is what I would say if they didn't shut down the eShop six months ago. Thanks a lot, Nintendo. You could also play multiplayer games with anyone who had a 3DS. All you need is two systems and a game, and you can play together with your homies. And it's awesome. I loved this back in elementary school, because I got to play games I never had with my friends. We played Mario Kart, Mario Bros, Luigi's Mansion, Mario Party, and so much more. The 3DS was truly the peak of handheld gaming. Then the PS Vita came up. Its only game is now on Steam for $20. It also sold like crap. And finally, there is the Switch. It's a home console and a portable game console. And its games, they felt so big almost like home console games and you can you could play them outdoors how amazing is that except can you really call it a handheld console it's too goddamn big to fit into my pocket and its battery life is not really the best at least for my old ass v1 switch and if you wanted to play multiplayer games with your friends you can't just locally download games you have to share the console which is, you know, fine by me. But if you have a Switch Lite, you can just play with your friends outdoors. You have to pay for the same game twice, which can be pricey. Plus, the lack of retro handheld games, 
a price for N64 games this high, and no music on the eShop, seriously, what the hell? All of this makes the Switch way less valuable than the 3DS as a portable game console. I think the Switch was more meant as a home console. I'm not saying that the Switch is a bad console and all that, it's an amazing console with amazing games, but I just think that it's not a good portable console. I'd love to see Nintendo make another handheld console in the future and make it as good as the 3DS, but that probably won't happen. There's also this great community on the internet that collects and mods retro handheld consoles and the stuff they make is just, it's just awesome. I might mod my own consoles sometime soon. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. What do you guys think of this visual style of video? Isn't that neat? I'd love to hear your guys feedback on it on the comments below. So anyway, you reached the end of video. Thank you very much for your attention. So subscribe. And like video. Please. Okay, bye.